In terms of in terms of the question you pose, in um, yeah, I think there's a there's definitely a big play for a trusted equity partner at this point in time. You know, we're we're underpinned by Housing Growth Partnership, yeah. um, which is obviously the partnership of uh, Lloyd's and Homes England, um, and I think you know we've all probably been in bed a few times with a different equi- equity partner, which can be a bit challenging, and um, they understand the market. They're underpinned by strong covenant and you know therefore you know the, the type of person you want to be with yeah the developers i speak to you know it's, it's almost a holy grail isn't it finding mm. an equity partner who you know i suppose a are aligned in terms of the, the risk reward um mm. discussion but also understand the risk because so, so many times you come along and there's an equity guy there who's interested and then realise it's construction, there's some risk, yeah, and they got cold um, feet. I think as well, Stuart, you know, you've seen a lot of this. Yeah, it's been quite a bit of time on this. And what we tend to find, a lot of private equity or, or you know, just by the very nature of use of investing in, in trading businesses. So they like consistent cash flow, they do not like lumpy cash flow. So, so to actually get the right equity partner in mm-hmm. who uh, understands the sector and, and can get the heads around the delays, the lumpy cash, the, the sales process coming in, you know, there and everywhere. It, it's really, really difficult. The, there's a few kind of coming out there now, and, and you, know, you know, we have spent a little bit of time here with our corporate finance guys in London speaking to some of these, but it, 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 you know, that is a challenge just to get it around the heads because obviously the cash coming into these parts is from, you know, third party again who, who you know, you know, just haven't got a clue at all about the, the kind of real estate market. So they, they want the cash back, they want the return back and, and the period that you need to get in and out of the house bill is quite, you know, quite a long time. And the, the funds are typically five to seven years, maybe 10 years, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, we, we had a classic example of that, just, just that someone had put some equity into a scheme during COVID. Obviously there were delays in terms of the construction, the sales, so through no fault of the developer, they needed to extend the sales period. Um, they approached a bridging lender for a development extension loan. Turned out that they needed to sign PGs from all the directors and shareholders and the two private equity guys just weren't willing to do that. So it ended up, they had to call upon us, we ended up purchasing them. And it, it, it's essential that you have the equity and, and the debt aligned. Yeah, and people talk about equity and equity, obviously that can be through you know, value added through a planning process. But what I'm seeing and you'll see Linda is so many people get stuck in that planning system and by the time they've been in it for 12 18 months with all the costs associated with it that hope of planning gain has, has been eroded um and, and you know linda you, you you were saying the other day that you know it's just getting worse resource and things and maybe just get your view on that it's little element of planning at this stage. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, there's no such thing as a little element of planning. <laughs> I, I think part of the fundamental problem with planning, um, as an ex-council planner many years ago, I found the escape tunnel, um, is that there is no commercial nous with, um, and I understand because did, of the next Did you read one. the email I just sent to the chief executive? <laughs> <laughs> I could have written it down. I could have written it. Uh, yeah. So, but having done a planning degree a million years ago, there was no commerciality taught as part of the fundamental of, of, of granting planning permission, going through the whole planning process. So there's no. Um, a client said to me once, there's no economic conscience in, in council planners. Um, and, and that, on the one hand, I understand that because they have to have no interest in the economics of it because it needs to be dealt with, kind of blinkered in, in, a, in conjunction with the policies and with local councillors and any objectors. But that seems to be missing a trick, and that is a fundamental problem, that they have no concept of how much, even a month's delay, it costs, and every next month costs, and it, it, it goes on like that. So part of the planning process is the lack of commerciality, and the lack of commerciality right at the top levels. It's not, it's it's not just... It's not just the boots yeah. on the ground. It is. It's the commerciality saying, "Ah, oh, we're not taking it to this committee. We'll take it to the next one." Yeah, we only need the planners to have a conscience on it. 
They, that's all yeah. they need to have. Yeah. They, as yeah. you just said, they, they that's policy. They yeah. focus on that. But economic development and the leadership at the top level has got to be. But, but as a result, when you've got your planning consent, every bit of equity, um, in, the, in some instances, development <coughs> cash availability has been squeezed yeah. to the extent that we get to funding. And <coughs> we can't make it work. So well, not not just pre though as well. Also during. So yes, market indicators, and you're having an ability to to do a section seventy three and make some substitutions, and you know, change the dynamics of your development. Well, it's impossible because you haven't got a time scale on getting them. By the time you've got through your changes, you've, um, you've blown. And, and as a result, then you've got to think about giving the equity away or yeah. or looking at other ways in terms of yeah. bringing. Yeah, because this the damages office. capacity as well. It's not just around getting on site quicker, but you end up tying capital up and go, right, we are, yeah. we're in project five, the capital's tied now. So when they're looking at sort of people trying to contribute to building their organizations and taking up some of the capacity yeah. for mm. housing developments, you physically can't do it. And you know, I, when, when I sort of first came into the property sector, I, I'm used to sort of dealing with business where you'd be more faster, sort of, you know, fa a faster pace. It's just frustrating because you sort of going in the room saying, yeah, we can look at that in 18 months time. You're like, you know, how are you supposed to really, when yeah. you look at the market, how are you supposed to really keep up with the demand and what we've got to deliver as a, as a sector when this, you know, everything's against it really. Planning's a big one, but really, yes. nobody sat down and designed a way of doing this to make sure the environment's there to be able to build more houses and build them. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Right yeah. Way. It's always tried. It's always tried. They tried to change it. I think it might be better. I think they're looking at changing. The only thing that you mentioned was, obviously, if you get it by and you use Section 73, I think that we really struggle with is discharge conditions and refinancing. Yeah. You can really, like with some of our projects, we're into 14 months, yeah. 15 mm -hmm. months. Yeah, you touched on that. I was with a client yesterday and, and they waited seven months to get a signed section 106 agreement in place. Oh, easy. It was 13 plus months. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, but the issues we've got then, you know, in funding is you'll have yeah. certain members <coughs> out there, you know, let, let's be honest, one being Homes England, who was set up there to assist mm -hmm. um, delivery of house building. Um, but it becomes a very, very tape box process in that we are going nowhere until you have got yes. confirmation that all the pre starts have been discharged, mm. you're through a JR period, your 106 is done, etc. etc. Um, and, and the very organisation to some extent who was set up to help this is actually not delivering you, Murphy. And hence, when I said earlier, I would just love to see a commercial government backed funder who was actually there understanding all yeah. these issues in terms of time equals cost equals profit squeeze to deliver for the SME sector. Somebody just mentioned leadership in local governments as well. I think that's that's critical because obviously the way local government operates is it, it's it's a it's a power of private sector, public sector organization. It's it's a it's run by elected members and they're politically motivated and there's all sorts of political complications going on there. But it, it's only by having strong sort of uh, officer-led leadership in the organisation because a lot of the a lot of the, in a lot of these times it, yeah I suppose people look at they will develop as they're greedy they're trying to build they're trying to make profit a lot of these things are regeneration projects that are mm -hmm. changing have really massive changes in communities that it's almost the local authority starts to fight against itself they set a plan and they set a strategy then we try to feed the strategy you know we try to add in the sort of um, the capacity and we are adding a bit of sort of a, a bit of rapid delivery and then what we get back really is that well actually no we don't want it to happen or uh, all the barriers get put into place and then what you then have is everybody crawling back behind the political framework then to say well actually it's politics well that's fine but you know I've, I've spoke to a number of developers who've uh, made decisions to move completely out of the authority areas because they just yeah. can't operate in those but we, areas. we will be doing. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you were saying that earlier that, you know, obviously there will be some areas yeah. and some councils which are quite proactive. Yeah. I think you've had that in, in one of we, yours. Yeah, yeah, we've been very, very yeah. council has been great. You know, realistically, we thought we'd, we, went, we went in with our best foot forward, we thought we'd overdevelop the site and it's around, so it's a great scheme. It, and it is, it's a really good scheme. It's for, you know, it's a step down facility for, young adults that are, that, that are coming out of care so it's for a good cause as well but I think with other councils you know, it'd be a straight oh, you can't do that you know, it's just you, you're squeezing it it's too much you're going to make too much money it just doesn't work but yeah we, you know, it was a it was a bit of a shock when we sat down and <laughs> we're on a planning meeting and they said yeah we like it and I, yeah. you sure? So how I know other ways of plugging that equity capital stack brownfield funding you know we've seen it 
you know, coming coming into play quite a bit more. But to me, and I'll be honest, it still seems like a lot of people don't really know how to access it, mm. don't know yeah. which route to go into, and, and if anybody got any pointers or guidelines as to how you attack that. No, no, no. Um, no. <laughs> right. We, uh, we have one scheme in particular that's got a, a phenomenal cash peak. It's a it's a former quarry, asbestos lined, and yeah, dirty place. Uh, but the equity requirement is enormous, yeah. even on the brownfield funding. Mm. Yeah, that's home to England saying you're basically all in, and it's that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. Well, we we just had a bit on the scheme, um, but I think it is ring fenced for the large projects. A lot of the pockets. Or pre-allocated for the for the large projects. I, th I think you know. I, th I think in the we've got one of the little city regions capped at fifteen thousand units. I think which we've got on one of the projects. Right, I've heard from you know a couple of drivers I'm dealing with. Is, you know, they've got a hundred grand from Wigan or mm. or something like that. But um, I still understand. I think it's who you know, bit of luck along the mm. way. Without uh, but the government's got this pot of money, but it's not necessarily helping people Support, access it, yeah. which is a real frustration. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because I suppose it ends up being oversubscribed, doesn't it? So I think, yeah. I think they're conscious of pushing it too much because then the, it, it's bad press, isn't it? Well, actually, everyone else access at these really incredible projects that need it. You can't get it because it's been ring fenced for something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a time. It's a time and effort on your resource as well, isn't it? You know, it, there's no security in the, the the time that you're putting into it. You're going to get anything back out of it. So sometimes it's you know, it's not it's not even worth trying. Well, that, that, that was the same with Homes <coughs> England, though, Dave. People were getting sent down there. It, it was into a rabbit hole, and they were li literally, like you said, Tis. unless it doesn't tick that box, there's no commerciality. And, exactly and, the and same. And it was there to be almost a fund of last resort. It is actually the last one you probably want to speak to. Yeah. At the moment, being completely honest. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's. that's <laughs> their challenge is, though, isn't it? Listen, I, you know, I've not got a great amount of sympathy either, but they, you know, they. You know, kind of government, kind of stewards of the, money, yeah. the, you know, of our money. And, and if they get it wrong, then they, you make a commercial view or something and it doesn't work out, they're going to get annihilated and all yeah. this, and that's the problem. Yeah. So, it's, also, people still use them because they're very smart. So, I don't know if you're going to say that it is a tip box exercise, it takes time. I, th I think what, once, you, once you're through the process, it's actually good. And yeah. what I will say is that, you know, they're not um, subject to. A lot of, you know, market sentiments and factors that a lot of other funders may be subject to. So, you know, the the remit is to deliver housing. So, once you're in there and once you've got a yeah. good relationship, um, it does actually work. It will stick with you to you get the housing as well. delivered. If you deliver the scheme, though, yeah, it's that it's that upfront access. You, you're almost like you're running for election because you know, yeah. like fifty yeah. percent of what you do is going around talking to homes and then getting homes on board with the strategy and then getting the combined authority on top of the strategy, local authority, the planners, you know, that you end up spending a lot of time doing that, which again, you know, you have to fund and, and all the rest of it. But the, I, I suppose that's where the success comes to a degree because you've almost tried to push front and center. This is strategically important. What's the purpose of the, of the funds? And is this strategically important? Is it going to kick off other projects? I think the other problem you have sometimes as well, especially with, with, from a Homes England environment, is that they always know what's coming down the track that they can't tell you. So it's a little bit like, look, yes, that fits now, but by the time we get to that, that won't be the now anymore because we know something's coming down the track. 